Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another RC Junkie video. Today I've got a very quick little unboxing or unpackaging, whichever way you receive it, um, of the new Bier RC SM4 electronic switch. This unit is going to be a great addition to anybody who wants to add just a few lights or even a complete light solution because you can add more than one of these units to your truck. Uh, the unit itself is very small, you can see here in my hand. And it has a, um, a negative input and four light outputs. Now these light outputs have 15 different options. Um, I will very quickly go through what they are with just a quick flick through and then we will probably do some other videos explaining how they work or showing the lights in operation so you can see how they would function with your relevant radio gear. So in the box you get the unit itself and you get the instruction manual. The instruction manual is in German. Uh, but the English version is downloadable from their website and I will include the link in my video the comments. Um, so I have downloaded the manual and printed it off here. So this is the English version. Now my measurements here are just for your reference. So the unit itself is listed as being I believe 20 by 15 by 4. Now that applies to the actual circuit board. So in practical use you would need an area roughly 30 millimeters, one inch to actually place it in an area within your vehicle, your model, your whatever you're building. Uh, the width is 15 because that is the width of the circuit board added by a little bit of heat shrink. And the actual um, unit itself is a thickness of five millimeters, about a quarter of an inch. Now that allows for the thickness of the cables and just a little bit of soldering here. So it will pretty much fit anywhere. And the unit is completely flat on the back with a little bit of um, clear, heat shrink so you by all means you could double sided sticky tape put that in somewhere and go from there now the other measurements I have on here are the length of the wires now there are four yellow wires here and as you can see they're 28 centimeters roughly 11 inches long and there's a let me just move this leather out of the way there is a black negative cable here this is 28 centimeters by 11 inches now these are all approximate measurements so work on best practices so you, you've got plenty of room to find somewhere to put that and certainly plenty of room to run these and route this somewhere and the servo cable came out slightly longer at 29.5 centimeters and 11 and a half inches so that's the unit itself very small very light and very easy to program so we will very quickly go through some of the manual so the manual comes with typical things and the manual is let me just check somewhere in the region of allowing for the 24 pages so there's a lot of functionality in here and you can get as advanced or as not as advanced as you like so very briefly we have the four outputs now these refer to these four outputs here i'll bring that in a little closer so each one of these creamy white colored dots just before the little switching transistor there is an LED. So they are colored LEDs. So we have the green, red, blue, and yellow. And they aid you in choosing your mode as well as choosing your potentiometer settings. I will very quickly cover that uh, just to explain what that means. So these are your functions. So what I will do is I will go on to the other page. Well, we'll go for a very short. So we have four way long, short, so this is a four-way long or short on off output. I'll go for the pages, it'll, it'll meet more relevance than me showing you here. So the unit is designed to work with a PWM signal of, I believe it is, let me just, here we go, fixed at 1500 milliseconds is the zero point. So the high end is 2000 milliseconds and the low end being 1000. So that just gives you an idea of how that works and that will become more relevant as I explain what's going on. So to wire the unit you connect the servo connector to your receiver output whichever you're using or you may put it for a Y lead and then connect it aligned with your servo output because this unit has the ability to do turning indicators as well as hazard lights. So then you run your main battery now your main battery can be up to 20 volts so bear in mind whatever voltage you put in here is coming in the negative and the positive is going to this side of your light so these symbols here represent your leds 
and this little box section or rectangle represents the resistor. So depending on what input voltage you put supply, say 7.2 volts, it will depend on what size this resistor is and what LED you're running, because some LEDs do have different wattage ratings, therefore they need different resistances. So whatever you put in here negative comes out of the four outputs as negative, and whatever you put in as positive goes to the side of your lights or components, motors or whatever you're switching, whatever you're driving, because uh, obviously you could just send this to an output which could send a signal or maybe even trigger another unit you have somewhere else. Maybe it triggers another sound unit or triggers another, another output there. And then you have your servo cable. So this is controlled by here. So this is where your supply voltage, so your receiver input, works from four to eight volts, which would cover majority of most models. Even vehicles that use three or four S, the ESC normally down voltage or drops the voltage down to a sensible voltage to go into the receiver. So this would even cover up to 7.2 volts if you're running high voltage servos because you want a high torque, high voltage servo and you're running that for your receiver if your receiver handles that or you may be running it from a different supply. So the way the unit works is it uses majority of, you can use proportional controls or you can use switches, <coughs> excuse me. And excuse the rain, by the way, the sound of the rain that's in the ground, it's slightly raining here. I always said this in my videos, it sounds like I live somewhere it's wet. To England, why would it be wet? Anyway, I digress. So this base is on, as you can see here, this is your 1.5 milliseconds and then up to 1.8. So between 1.8 and 1.2 is a dead zone. So between 1.8 and 2 milliseconds is the switch zone and between 1.2 milliseconds and 1 is your switch zone there. So some of the outputs are switch outputs, so you could put it on a two-way switch or even a two-way toggle if you only have a momentary left or a momentary right. Or some of them work in proportional. So they have, if you're similar, if you're familiar with the DA units, you'll be familiar with this symbol here. So this is your stick in a neutral position, this is your stick in a say half position, and then your stick in a full position, and you stick back to normal, stick in half and stick in full. So hopefully that explains what that represents there. So that's the movement, the range of movement on your servo. And the unit itself is programmable via typically a two-position switch. So what this instruction very briefly says here, I won't go through it, we'll go through it in another video, is to program the unit, you basically unplug it from the receiver, power your receiver with your transmitter on, so your transmitter and receiver is ready. You then connect the unit to an output that has a two-way switch on it. So you have a switch where you can go to full A or full D position. You then connect that, that will then power the unit, and then you need to move this switch in either direction, so it needs to be in the correct direction to depend on if that servo channel is reversed or not, three times fully. So you need to go click, click, click to put the unit into programming mode. Once into programming mode, you then use this switch to go up and down the modes here. Let me just move this up a little bit. So this goes up and down the modes, and then the LEDs, as I said, on the unit indicate in which mode you're in. There is another step from here that some of the modes and we will go over here. Some of the modes, modes 7, 10, 12, and 14, have the option to do what's called a potentiometer setting. So whilst in the programming mode, you can then switch it into the potentiometer mode of that mode, bear with me, uh, and then you can choose whether it's less sensitive, more sensitive, your milliseconds, the number of flashes. So this number 12 here refers to using the unit as a turning indicator, where the indicator will turn off themselves after a number of flashes so a bit like you have on your typically on your vehicle where you push your indicator stalk gently you will get two three four seven up to nine flashes and then it stops so that means if you just move your stick you're going to get nine flashes or you can assign, assign that to a switch or a potentiometer pot but you will need to turn the pot on your radio to full or at least past the 1.8 and 1.2 second section to get that range of correspondence and then a potentiometer again you use the leds to set the potentiometer value so going very quickly through these mode one is a on off so you have here output one output two on off this is which is on and off in memory this is momentary momentary and on and off in memory so in memory means when it's into that position so if you're in here briefly you get the momentary, and if you're in here for a longer period, you get longer. So. Again, we have on and off memory. 
this here um, I will let Pierre know about this this should have been written in English here this is switches on in German so these are all switch on momentary and you can see here now we have the 0 50 100 0 50 100 in plus and negative or up or down the range depending if your server is a channel is reversed ideally 90% of mobile 99% well, I would say of radios bought on the market today all work from a 1.5 to 2000 to 1000 near enough that some radios depending on how good your sticks are whether they're the gimbals or you've got digital one to analog ones or there you don't always reach two milliseconds you don't always reach one but as long as you get above 1.2 and above 1.8 you can achieve this here because if you can reach 1.2 you can certainly reach 1.4 and you have a little bit of leeway between the 1.5 so you have a one either way a one millisecond either way it doesn't sound a lot but it's to do with pulse wave modulation i won't bore you with that you have mode 5 which is an ek mfa one that is that would be familiar to people who also use the Pierre units you have those switch units you can use you can also use the D version of that you have the pulse when moving so we will go through this but in my interpretation of this is when you're in this position if you move here you get output one if you move all the way to here you get output two if you move back to here you get output four if you move from here to here you get output three we will go through that and we will see how that works in conjunction. I'll get some little LEDs on a breadboard and a little stick and we're on my uh, transmitter and we'll see how that works. So we have the four-way light switch. Now this is to allow you to switch on four different lights. So we have four outputs. Bearing in mind, as you switch on one output, output one goes off and output two number comes on. So if you had four sets of running lights which you wouldn't typically use at the same time but you want to be able to choose which ones you have and there's certainly this and say this output could run out to a small little flashy unit that runs say a beacon so you could have front beacon rear beacon side beacon and maybe somewhere else but bearing in mind that comes off that goes off on off on off on off so you have four outputs and again it's used by your switch here so you can choose that one that one that one and the way you do it is you step up so you go from one, two, three, and four, four, three, two, and one back. So just bear that in mind. As where this version is similar to how the light switch up and down function works on the Bier SFR1, as in you have four outputs. On the SFR1, you can choose which output comes on and when. So you could have one and two outputs on and three. Here, you basically have all four on then three on, then two on, then one off. So if, in example, if you were to run this for your, say your front lights, you can have roof lights, fog lights, sorry, roof lights, dip beam, fog lights, and say hair, roof, another set of lights here. But then you may go down to only having fog, roof, and driving lights. And then you may go down to only having driving lights and roof lights. And then you may go down to only having driving lights. So you've assigned driving lights to four, as I say, you can have four lights on, three lights on, two lights on, one light on, and then in again in reverse, one on, two on, three on, four on. So this would be your typical what you'd use all the time, less, less and less. So you can bear in mind how that works and how that would work for you, so you just need to correspond that way. So we have here the unit connected with a Y lead to allow you to use left and right indicators with one light and two light. So down here. We have left indicator and light one, right indicator, and then over here we have hazards. We will go through there so you can switch these hazards on the warning lights in the memory. So I believe from reading this very quickly, we we'll say we will go through it. If you switch very quickly into this side, it will turn your hazards on. Very quickly, it will turn it off. Very quickly this way, you will get light one and light two on. That's where movement gradually in these areas will give you indicator one and indicator left and right. And again, you depend on how your channels are set up. That would go through from there. This is indicators in memory with hazard lights. So similar to that, but not using a Y lead and using a switch. This is indicator automatic shutdown. So this is the one where I said you can change the potentiometer value. So here is your potentiometer value, depending on what value you choose using your programming switch and your indicator lights on the board, you choose the number of switches. And again, this is assigning it to a switch. So you could certainly try this by assigning it to a stick. We will try that and see how it works. But I believe you should be able to go left and right, left and right. Please excuse my phone beeping in the background.
We also have blinker memory. Uh, this is light one and light two. I will say I'll let Pierre know about some of the German words that's still in it, but I'm sure you can figure out that this is referring to light one and light two when it says in here. So we have indicator left, indicator right. Here the indicator controlled by the steering, which is separate channel. So this is where if you wanted your steering on a rocker switch, and now that's certainly how I have mine, because I don't like the fact that every time you turn the wheels, the indicators come off, which is how it is on some sound and light units. So again, indicators using blinker, but using a switch. This is very interesting. So we have the brake light and reverse light function. Again, using a Y lead, connecting it to your your ESC output. You can use it to have your driving lights, so your brake light and your reversing light. So when you stop, you get a brake light, and when you pause and then go back into the reverse light, you get the reverse light function. So here we have brake light without emergency brake light, brake lights with emergency brake lights, or light or reverse light. So say, and again, potentiometer values here, you have your areas on which that to work. So that refers to when you're driving forward, how far do you pull it back to make your truck break? If you bring it back, say a quarter of the stick, that would reference a milliseconds range. Again, we're running from uh, 2000 to 1000 milliseconds. So you can see how this refers to in here in 1.52. So that can control your brake light and reversing lights. Um, and then on here we have variance as well. So this is very interesting here. We have the variance control. So the variant one, two, three, and four. Now this may look very daunting, but basically this suggests that this light is on, 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 then off. But as the goes through, you can see all four outputs. So this sequence will repeat. So this is like a beat or music. So this sequence will repeat. So in this sequence, light one, is on 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 and on and light three is on and then on so you can see that that is on and on this stays on that goes off and just as that's coming on that goes off that's on and that's on and just as that comes on that goes off and then it's repeated with the opposite channel so you could certainly use this for beacons so you could use this for flashing um say like if you have the grill lights you could have flash one set here and one set here so you got two lights here and two lights here so that would be your top and your bottom beacons, and these would be two others. So you'd have two flashing slowly and two flashing fast. And again, here on variant two, on, 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 and these ones here are longer. So we have, these are short pulses, these are slightly longer pulses, and these are longer pulses. So you can see we have a long on, then a period of off, a long on, a long period of off, sorry, off, on, off. You get the idea. And then here, this will give you a chase effect. So you can here see you've got on, 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 on. On, 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 so that will give you a chase effect. So depending on how you wire your LEDs, you can assign a chase effect. And this here is the night rider effect, as they call it. So this gives you the tracking lights that track from left to right. So you'd have four outputs, or you could certainly do two. You'd obviously remember those two outputs. If they're connected to one output, would be on at the same time. So you'd have two lights, 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 and that's what that's referring to as the night rider effect. We have then, so that is assigned by your long and short controls here, the switches, flashes, running lights, and that goes through. So that's just my notes on the back there. So hopefully that explains what's in the box. We're getting towards the 20 minute mark. We don't want to go on too much longer than that. So you get your manual. If you download, you get the German one that comes with it in A5 format. This is the A4 that you can download, print, whatever size you like. This is your little unit here. Very small, very easy to fit somewhere. And that's it. So thanks for watching. As I say, we will do some more videos explaining how this works and I'll do a little breadboard demonstration. I just want to give you a quick unboxing because this unit is very new and a lot of people are going to be saying, how does it work? What does it look like? How big is it? I know it says this in the instructions, how big it is size, but when it's actually in your hand, you get an idea of how, it, how big it is. So just as a very quick example, that's my little mock-up servo I use. So that is how big the unit is in relation to a servo. So it's not as wide and certainly nowhere near as big. So you could certainly use that. As I say, the good thing, you can put two or three of these units. So you can put one on your steering, one on your brake, and one on your lights. And that will give you indicators, four sets of lights, driving lights, brake lights, and reverse lights. So if you just want to gradually add light to your model and you don't want to go out and spend two, three, four hundred pounds, or even euros, dollars, whatever country you're in, 
on a unit, you can certainly add this. You can get this to add this to your running lights because most people like to, to see where they're going. And then you could add another unit to do your indicators and hazards. Then you could add another unit to do your brake light and reverse lights. So three of these little units, very cost effective, would give you near enough all the functions. So it's gonna give you 12 outputs of what you can choose what to do. And certainly you could just add another one. So bear in mind, you just need a channel for each. Now you could pair two up for a Y lead. So if you have two of these, both running strobe lights, because you have a recovery truck, you can certainly put a Y lead onto these and both units will get a similar signal. So long as they both get a 1.5 signal, they will switch on, switch off, do whatever you need to do. So you could do eight outputs. I wouldn't recommend you Y lead a double Y lead onto a channel and maybe put three of these onto one. You may be struggling to get the PWM signal and may get some cross signals, but you can certainly add two. And that will give you eight channels or eight lights on just one output of your radio. So if you've got a three channel radio, it may be very complex on your little switch you're doing on your third channel, but you could certainly achieve most of what you need and say, why lead your ESC and why lead your servo through? So, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and explained a little bit about this unit and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.